Today we'll be investigating friction. Friction is a force that opposes movement. The hypothesis for this investigation is the amount of friction depends on the force pressing the two surfaces together. In this experiment, we will be adding masses to a wooden block and then measuring the force of friction between the wooden block and the table using a Newton meter, as you can see here. My prediction for this investigation is as the mass in the block increases, the force of the friction will increase at the same rate. In this investigation, we will be using a wooden block, 100 gram ma masses, and a Newton meter. These are both Newton meters. As you can see, when a force is applied, it measures the force in Newtons. We'll begin by measuring the force of just the wooden block. As I pull it across the table, we can see the force it's approximately 0.1 newtons. Once again, we will pull the block with no weight on it. We can see the force is approximately 0.1 newtons. And lastly, we will complete this one more time. Once again, it is 0.1 newtons. We'll now add 100 grams of mass to our wooden block. As you can see, when I pull the wooden block with 100 grams on it, the force is now 0 0.3 newtons. I will now try this again. This time, the force was 0.4 newtons. And one more time. The force is once again 0.4 newtons. I will now add 200 grams in total to my wooden block. we can see the force as I pull it was 0 0.6 newtons. We'll measure the force once again. In this case, it is 0 0.7 newtons. It's important we try and pull this at the same speed or same rate every time. As you can see, if I pull it very quickly, the amount of force increases quite a bit. So we must ensure we pull it at the same rate so we have a fair test. Okay, once again, 0 0.7 Newtons. Continue this experiment with 300, 400, and 500 grams. We must calculate the mean force. In order to calculate the mean, or the average, we add up all the results and divide by the number of results we have. We will add all of our results together, 0.1 plus 0.1 plus 0.1, and divide our answer by 3 to get, once again, 0.1 as our mean. We can see the value is given as a fraction. You must press this button on your calculator to convert the fraction into a decimal. Now record my mean force as 0.1 newtons. I'll do the same with my next three results. So 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. 
plus 0 0.4 plus 0 0.4, dividing our answer by 3. Once again, we must press the button that says S to D to convert this to a decimal to get 0 0.36 recurring, which rounds to 0 0.4 newtons. Continue to calculate the mean for each mass. The next step is to plot our results on a graph. When we are drawing a graph, our independent variable always goes on the x-axis. The independent variable is the information we know before the practical started. We knew the mass we were going to use. The dependent variable is what we measured during the investigation. We did not know the amount of force that it would result in. Now we will be plotting our mean force. So with 100 grams, so with zero, we had 0 0.1 newtons. So I will put an X here. With 100 grams, 0 0.4 newtons. With 200 grams, 0 0.7 newtons. 300, 1.0. 400, 1 1.3, and 500, 1 1.5 newton. Our next step is to make a line of best fit. A line of best fit shows the trend in the data and can be used to predict future points on our graph. To draw a line of best fit, I align my ruler so that about half of the points are on each side of it, as you can see here. I then draw my line of best fit using the ruler. The line of best fit can be used to predict future trends. So as we can see, if we wanted to know what the force would be at the mass of 600 grams, we can use the line of best fit to predict that. So at a mass of 600 grams, the line of best fit shows it'll be approximately 1.85 newtons.